Three of the cameras on the Mars rover Curiosity were designed and built by Malin Space Science Systems. During the rover's first week on Mars, SPIE visited Malin's headquarters in San Diego. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. I'm Mike Ravine. I'm the Advanced Projects Manager here at Malin Space Science Systems in San Diego, California, and I'm going to take you on a tour of our facility and show you how we build cameras for space missions. This thing here is an engineering model copy of the, our, our, our uh, two cameras on the mast on MSL, which go by the name Mast Cam. We needed something that would function the same way, and so these are the two cameras. This is a, a pan tilt mechanism we did in house. It's, you know, functionally it's sort of like what's on the rover, but what's on the rover is much bigger and more impressive to look at. But we wanted to be able to shoot panoramas ourselves in house. So what you're looking at here is is from here back, this is a copy of what's on on the rover right now. The lenses for mass cam were custom lenses because they're focusable and they have filter wheels. They were fairly expensive and so for this application of a test bed which needed to be relatively inexpensive we couldn't afford to do that so what we did is we have these off-the-shelf lenses which we bonded these gears to and then we have these commercial motors and this little box here which has a microprocessor in it which basically creates the the simulation from the viewpoint of the electronics and software that this is acting the way the flight lens does because it doesn't really act the motor you know have to drive a different number of counts and that sort of thing so that we have a system here that can be commanded from from the rover just as the flight instrument is commanded and respond more or less the same way in terms of the distance it's focusing and things like that so uh, that meant that we could put this capability on the rover and have it focusable and have that cost a tiny fraction of what it would cost to build the copies of the flight uh, units and so there are a set of these up on the test bed rover at JPL right now and we wanted to be able to do the same kind of testing in-house after those went up there so we also built this other set one typically wants to have this capability in-house uh, in case something goes wrong because it helps to have hardware on the ground that you can use to debug things, which is, you know, what's going on in this lab. We want to make sure the electronics work, and one of the things we do is a lot of testing on the electronics, both testing of developmental units. A big thing for MSL was we're on the surface of Mars, the temperature goes up way, way, it goes up, you know, to some reasonable temperature and goes really cold at night and does that every single day. So we had to put one of our developmental units in this chamber over here and do 2,000 thermal cycles on it down to minus 135 C to show that the parts weren't going to pop off the circuit boards uh, after some number of those cycles. So we proved that, so we're feeling pretty good that those cameras should last a long time. The real problem is not so much any particular temperature, but it's, it's the cycling because that's the thing that drives you. get differential thermal expansion between different things, the parts and the circuit board and so they get bigger and smaller and that change in dimension loads the solder joint and you, you, know, you do it once, okay fine, you do it a thousand times, uh, you do it two thousand times, at some point it becomes a problem. So it's really about the cycling, that's the, that's the main thing that we worry about in terms of trying to make sure that we think the things are going to work properly. For uh, vibration testing, which is a, another thing that we have to do, and also for thermal vacuum testing, which is a big part of what we have to do, uh, there's a couple of places here in town that have facilities that we use on a contract basis. Cubic Defense Systems has a shake table and a small thermal vac chamber, and for bigger instruments, uh, uh, UCSD has a rather larger chamber that they've let us use a couple of times, which is certainly very helpful. The company's cameras have flown on numerous missions over the last two decades. The maps and data generated by these instruments will be utilized by scientists and explorers for generations to come. Each instrument proposed was proposed as part of a competitive science investigation, so there's specific scientific questions that were being addressed. I think having seven years, seven Mars years of the weather record and having weather data, having daily weather data of Mars just going into the future, I think is something, if we're doing anything at Mars, it will be useful. If we're landing, if we have eventually have people on Mars, we have rovers on Mars, people are going to want to know what the weather is. And knowing what the weather is at a particular time is also going to be a function of having some idea of how the weather changes changes over time and so uh, the, the weather camera data I think is going to be a critical thing in terms of you know future future exploitation and understanding of Mars. Um, we have the other camera that we have on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is the context camera which gets six meters per pixel and as of now we've mapped about 80 percent of Mars at six meters per pixel and about 30 percent of it we've got multiple coverage on so a lot of that is stereo. Uh, MRO is going fine 
Uh, so we look forward to having the whole planet covered at six meters per pixel, which is actually higher resolution globally than we have of the Earth. Uh, and and as, as time goes on, also having more and more of that in stereo. And I think if you think about six meters per pixel in stereo of every place on Mars, I think that's a data set that will be useful decades from now because we're probably not going to do better than that in terms of mapping the whole planet uh, any, any time for the foreseeable future. So I can imagine, you know, you know, 40 years from now, astronauts tromping around on Mars and pulling up these data to look at, well, you know, what's, what's on the other side of this mountain? We've got to go over here. We didn't think we were going to have to go over here, but we have to go over here. What, what's over there? Uh, likewise, our cameras on the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which are much higher resolution, they get sub-meter per pixel resolution, mostly because they're in a much lower orbit. Uh, we've now mapped about 30% of the moon at sub-meter per pixel resolution, and there's no particular reason we're not going to be able to finish mapping the entire moon at that resolution. And again, you think about future human activity on the moon or even robotic exploration on the moon, having, being able as a starting point to have a map that's at a half meter per pixel resolution anywhere you wanted to go, I think it's going to be a real resource, and I think it's a resource that will be useful you know, decades from now. We've taken the cameras, uh, the technology we developed for our cameras in MSL, we, what I s described, we have an external camera head and then a, an electronics box that has a lot of flash and a compressor in it. And we basically developed a modular space flight camera system around that. We call this eCam. So this is one of the camera heads. It's a little smaller because it uses a compact CMOS sensor. Any spacecraft should be able to have imaging on it at a relatively modest cost compared to what people usually think cameras and space missions cost. So it's one of the things we're putting a lot of effort into right now. This is a, a picture of the lunar crater Tycho taken with our cameras on the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Um, our cameras on LRO, the, this is taken with the narrow angle camera, uh, and the narrow angle camera is actually two separate cameras. Uh, each one is a Ritchie Creation uh, uh, telescope uh, with a three degree field of view, but we needed a, a six degree swath, so it's two copies of the cameras mounted side by side. So if you, if you just look up here, this little, little notch you see here, that this is the output from one camera, and then this is the output from the other camera. And, uh, this is a, a, a line scan system, so it's got a line array and it works like a fax machine, so it scans it out a line at a time. So they swung the spacecraft over and pointed that way, and as the orbital velocity carried it around the moon, they swept out this, uh, what I think is fair to characterize as this spectacular picture. <laughs>